Senator Cantwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ambassador, good to see you. Um, thank you for your briefing today. I wanted to ask you about the WTO decision um, that ruled in favor of U.S. claimants that Airbus had been receiving illegal subsidies from the European uh, government. Um, they found roughly $20 billion in illegal actionable items, including uh, $4 billion in launch aid subsidies. So it's my understanding now that the final appellate decision in the U.S. case um, against the EC um, is scheduled to be rendered this spring. So what, uh, following that, uh, if it's upheld, uh, can you outline the next steps and actions that USTR intends to take to ensure that the EC complies with the decision? Because there's so much at stake here as it relates to jobs and job impact. I want to, and obviously the precedent it, it sets. I think this is probably one of the largest decisions that we've been involved in in a long time and obviously ruled in the U.S. favor. How do we ensure the implementation? Well, it is the largest and it is the most complex. And Senator, I thank you for your um, consistent um, involvement and, and assistance in helping us work through this. We are awaiting the final um, um, decision of the appellate body and assuming that the European Union doesn't appeal, then uh, they will either have See, I think I forget the exact timetable. They have a reasonably short period of time to decide that they're going to conform their behavior uh, to the appellate body's ruling that that uh, the assistance they've given, most of the launch aid that they've given um, to the Airbus, the WTO found to be non-compliant. Uh, they have the opportunity to comply, and if they don't, then we have several remedies that are available to us in terms of levying retaliatory action. But we aren't quite there yet, and as soon as we get that final appeal, opinion, and know whether in fact they're going to um, appeal or not, then we will be consulting with stakeholders on the appropriate way forward. But this was an issue we have expended considerable resources. It's one we take seriously because it goes to the core of one of our strongest manufacturing industries and hundreds of thousands of jobs in this case. And we'll do everything we can to protect those. And so that, I, I assume that means an aggressive response. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know, you know, I saw online at, at a, uh, actually it was a Texas publication, but citing your office saying that during this time period, we probably lost something like 60,000 aerospace jobs. Now they cited a USTR report. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, during this time period, there has been significant impact in the industry. So I think it's very important that the United States be aggressive uh, when the WTO rules and that we, we do get some relief uh, in this issue. So I thank you for that. Um, I wanted to um, ask you about Korea. I know there's been, I had to step out for a markup in another committee. There's lots of dialogue about the various trade agreements but um, and the proposed time frame. Um, I'm concerned because the European Union Korea Free Trade Agreement goes into effect in July of this year. And so obviously that could put the U.S. at a disadvantage as it relates to access to markets. So what are you, um, what, are, what are you thinking the timing is for us um, in getting this agreement uh, implemented and um, time frame for submit, submitting it to Congress? Well, Senator, we, for yours may not be as much a question as it is an answer. And you may have missed, we sent a letter to the um, heads of our committees and jurisdiction, both Senate Finance and Ways and Means earlier this week saying we're ready to begin work with them on structuring the text so that we can move forward immediately. And I'm sure you've heard the comments of many members of your committee. There are some that believe we should not move forward with Korea until we're ready to go on Panama and Colombia. We think the wiser course of action since Korea is ready is for us to move forward. We have heard uh, the strong sentiments of this committee and others that you want us uh, to move forward as aggressively with Panama and Colombia that we're gonna do that. But for reasons that you outlined, it's important that we not lose share in Korea. Panama and Colombia are very important allies. They're good neighbors. We're making good progress. But Korea represents the largest market opportunity of the last, it's, Korea is more economically compelling than the last nine free trade agreements the United States has done combined. We're talking $10 billion in exports and goods, as estimated by the ITC, over 70,000 jobs. And since we've talked a lot about lost markets and these others, we were the number one uh, exporter in the Korea four years ago. Today, we're number four. 
We don't want to see that change. We think this is an extraordinary opportunity. We'd like to work with the committee to move forward on that now and see it passed as soon as possible. I know many members have worked and worked on these issues, and it does seem that it is a little more ready to go. Um, I would just say on the Colombian issue, um, just from one senator's perspective, um, the Colombian government needs to do something to guarantee the protection of their judiciary. Judges can't ride back and forth to work on buses unprotected or unaccessed. We have a problem there uh, with uh, what has happened to labor leaders and to me having a judicial system that is uh, on par with uh, the U.S. and other uh, countries is very important to making sure that there is a, a fair system of the law in Colombia. So thank you very much.